Hello everyone, welcome back to CE567. Um, this, le this lecture, uh, number 7, is talk about the MSE walls. By the end of this lecture, uh, students should know uh, the overall design procedure for the mechanically stabilized earth uh, structure. Okay, so um, for MSE walls, those um, mechanically uh, stabilized earth uh, structures um, pretty much is like the uh, gravity walls that we learned about in the previous lecture. But uh, what happened now is like uh, within the, uh, the backfill, uh, it has uh, reinforcements within it, such that um, it will be more e economically in a way that uh, uh, the, the soil plus the uh, reinforcements uh, could be strong enough that uh, to be constructed uh, much taller. Um, and also um, uh, for the material reinforcements, uh, basically it has uh, two options. You could be uh, either the, um, uh, in the early days uh, make with the uh, inextensible steel. So for example here, uh, you have the face of the wall and then like um, um, the steel bar will be uh, placed uh, kind of like in between layers, so, uh, soil leaves. And then like, you know, um, the enforcements uh, of steel and soil, they react with each other, then uh, you got like uh, much stronger systems. Or like, you know, steel could be like uh, uh, expensive. And uh, in, in this uh, recent years, uh, using uh, um, extensible materials, uh, which is a dual grid, or the uh, the uh, any kind of po uh, polymeric material, reinforced materials, is also very uh, popular now nowadays. Uh, if we go that way, uh, you know, extensible uh, materials, uh, which make the design uh, much more challenging because uh, the interactions between like a deformable plastic uh, versus like you know relatively stiff uh, uh, metallic material. Uh, you know, soil is already complicated uh, material. Uh, it's this highly like uh, nonlinear plastic material, and then you are adding on uh, uh, another kind of plastic material. You know, the interactions between the two plastic material will be really challenging uh, to model. And um, you know, uh, we will talk more about this, like you know, how uh, this kind of technology or like uh, analytical approach as engineers how to. Uh, design for this issue, we'll cover more in this lecture. But like, you know, uh, the big picture here is like, kind of like, we kind of have two cons. Um, like, you know, you have your phase uh, panel here, which is the wall. And then uh, uh, we have uh, reinforcements go into the wall. Um, and uh, the reinforcements, reinforcements could be steel or like, you know, dual grid plastic materials. Um, so like this structure here, they kind of like act with each other and uh, uh, the interactions between uh, the reinforcement soils is uh, the key features or the key uh, uh, components that like, you know, uh, when geotech engineers design for this uh, MSC structure. And, you know, this, this kind of like a practice or uh, engineering design, engineering structure uh, we have been practicing in, in a couple of decades already. Uh, a lot of like advancement happens in the past two decades, uh, which is like a huge industry we call the uh, geosynthetics uh, uh, sectors. Uh, you know, uh, you not only the constructions but the uh, um, the the research and also the manufacture of materials on those geo grid. You know how to make dams and you know, what kind of design it is. It should be uh, what materials should be used. You know those those has been a lot of uh, work has been done uh, in the past. So uh, to our point now, like you know uh, in this 2020s uh, or 2021, uh, this type of uh, constructions, the MSC wall designs, has been uh, uh, mature enough and have been proven that it works uh, in our. Uh, civil engineering applications. Uh, um, so there's many different kinds of uh, MSE structure. Um, you, you can construct it with a, uh, with a wrap phase type of uh, 
uh, uh, uh plastic, uh, geoplastic materials, and uh, giving you a slope at the wall, or like you know at the face, like uh, you can have all the different kind of like uh, modular block and different design. You know uh, over there give you uh, different like engagements, like uh, from block to block, and also the connections. Uh, with the wall face and the geo material, geo grid materials, and it's also another important design. And um, uh, you know, there's if you walk away like you know different highway, you see all this kind of like a uh, design uh, is around the country, around the country, and many kind, many many times is is part of the uh, highway design because like whenever like uh, a highway is elevated, you have a cut like you know. Uh, and uh, the, the 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 embankment or the uh, the abutment uh, for the foundations uh, men were likely a uh, MSC wall, and this is particular also like a uh, popular in uh, uh, urban area because to certain height of your uh, gravity wall, you will be too expensive if you just like you know construct it with uh, purely uh, soil backfill. Or like you know, to some point, it's not feasible to to have the soils even with 100% relative compactions to sustain certain heights. I think the rule of thumb is about uh, six meter, and nine meters is pretty much just a limit of a uh, uh, height of a uh, 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 soil only uh, a gravity wall. But with the uh, uh, reinforcements we are he talking about here, uh, you can go much higher than like a soil only. And I think, like you know, uh, nowadays technology can help you to help you go up to 15 meters, you know, if you need, uh, you know, that kind of like a, a giant wall, uh, super tall wall, uh, if if you need to go that way. And here's a picture you see, like kind of like a basic design, or like uh, all like you know, the, the, like a wall in constructions, the face of a retaining wall, and uh, all the enforcements behind. So this picture gives you a. Uh, is the uh, like you know a steel reinforcement wall that uh, take place in almost like half of the strength uh, century ago, and uh, you could be one of the uh, first uh, steel reinforcement type of a uh, 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 gravity wall or MSC wall uh, reinforced it with steel uh, strip, and um, this this could be probably one of the er uh, the early one early days that we have uh, well documentations. Uh, of this type of constructions, and you see the uh, the wall face right there, and uh, you have the uh, the steel uh, strip uh, connect to the wall, and uh, the soils will be compacted uh, within all this uh, steel steel bar steel strip, and in a way that the soils uh, is grabbing on the strip and then connect to the wall. So we talk about steel. Uh, another option is again is those like a uh, geogrid, uh, geotextile material. So geotextile is is used for raptor face. You know, you see you see, you see a geotextile on the left hand side right here, uh, and the right hand side is and that kind. You know, what we call the geogrid, and you have soils going to the uh, openings and. Uh, you have work kind of like a let, uh, you know, grabbing with uh, of the soil. So that's why it's always like a prefer to have uh, a granular materials at backfill, or like you know, to many jobs and you pretty much is a must. Uh, you know, you only the only the tolerance is five percent. You know, uh, your backfill soil may only can have up to five percent of fine materials, but uh, the majority of it got to be the uh, angular. Uh, uh, sand, so like you know, uh, imagine it's like when you would, this type of material try to pull out or or uh, uh, you know, apply a tensile force uh, with the, on on the sandy materials. Uh, those uh, granular uh, uh, sand will help to make sure everything stay in place. So this is a picture showing how the uh, wet phase uh, uh, MSE wall. So the uh, uh, do, when doing constructions, you do by layer by layers, and uh, you know the um, the geotextile will uh, wrap along the face. So this is the uh, the wall face, and like uh, the geotextile material was uh, wrap along, wrap about it, and then like you know uh, doing constructions, and then the next uh, layer put on top of it. Then the vertical stress will help uh, confining uh, 
those geotextile materials. And this is a real picture based on uh, one of the very uh, like a tall uh, uh, open uh, the uh, the rep rep the raptor face geotextile wall uh, at Seattle, Washington, and it is one of the tall tallest uh, at the days uh, uh, at the end of uh, 1980s. Is almost go up to, go up to 20 meters. Uh, it's quite impressive uh, on. You know the way they constructs like a wall can go that high using geotextile. With soil only, there's no way you can uh, uh, build like a almost like a one-to-one -one cut wall uh, to that tall. And also we mentioned about the geo grids. So that's another project like you know uh, in the mid '90s at Canada. Um, so you have all this like a uh, uh, concrete uh, modular modulus uh, wall right here. And what you cannot see behind it is those geo grid. So what behind the the walls are the geo geo grids, uh, geo textile. Uh, sorry, geo grid materials attached to the wall, and then you have sand, pretty much like uh, being backfill um, uh, be between those like uh, uh, geo grids. And here uh, some pictures show you like you know the sequence on uh, construction constructing. Uh, MSC wall. So this is uh, in extensible uh, strip reinforcement wall. So pretty much this is, you see all those steel bar right there. So first of all, um, we have the concrete, uh, you know, to be on the wall face, and then like uh, we put on the uh, 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 the facing elements. You know, sometimes they kind of like being Lego. So block by blocks, uh, you have the wall face, um, and then like uh, we will install the uh, the strip. Connecting to the wall face, um, and then uh, start to place the soil as backfill soil layer by layers. Um, make sure like all the uh, granular soils uh, that got like a uh, uh, spray outs like uh, evenly on site. And what being important here is uh, doing the uh, compactions. So compactions is the key when building this type of material, uh, this type of structure. And uh, you need you need to be very sensitive too, like you know, uh, you you need to do it by leaf, and the thickness of the leaf, each leaf will be uh, highly specialized um, in the uh, in the spec, because it cannot be too thick. Otherwise, like if if the leaf is too thick, then like uh, the compactions will not be effective, and it cannot be too thin, because if it's too thin, uh, you come uh, the soil won't be enough. Uh, you know layers to protect uh, your your strip uh, reinforcements during the compactions, uh, and there's also a high uh, uh, requirements uh, when you do uh, do the compactions in terms of for machines to, to be used. Uh, when especially when you get close to the face, uh, you only can use those kind of like the handheld uh, compactor or vibrator. Because uh, here I have a, a sheet foot uh, compactor right there. This is for the back of the wall, uh, not at the f uh, close to the face of the wall. Because when you get to get close to the face of the wall, um, you know, um, uh, if the compactor is too heavy, uh, you will damage the connections between the uh, the strip and, and the wall. So you know, all the all those like you know need to be very detailedly uh, uh, laid out uh, in design and especially like uh, in the CM part on constructions, um, and also like the compactors. Even though at the at the rear side, you 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 you, you rarely see like a very heavy compactions machines to go on site to do, do all this MSE MSE wall constructions, uh, especially for those like a geo grid material, geo textile materials, because those like uh, are very sensitive, you know. If you if you have heavy machines, yes, you can get it done quicker or faster in terms of soil compactions. But you don't want those heavy machines uh, to damage of your geo grid. Um, so here is also a picture to show you um, the the price of um, MSC MSC wall uh, as you know uh, the height of the wall along with the cost. So again, if you have gravity walls, like you will go to be really expensive. Uh, you know, the taller you go, the more compactions, and you know, the, and uh, not only compactions, but you you got to be have very angular materials, so like you know, as a backfill, such that like you know, uh, the sand can can uh, get 
uh, stable on, with each other uh, when you're constructing a soil only wall but like uh, with the uh, reinforcements that you have uh, either like uh, expansible or, or inexpensable metal on using so those geo, uh, synthetic uh, materials um, the height of the wall uh, won't be uh, too expensive or like you know kind of like stable heights like in uh, uh, with the uh, the cost and also the height of the wall so this type of uh, MSC wall constructions or technology is, is uh, in fact is getting very popular in a few of geotechnical engineering and um, uh, many geotechnical engineers actually they they, they build their career uh, uh, based on MSC wall designs uh, the private con consultancy you know there's companies that like, focus on uh, uh, constructing or designing uh, uh, on this uh, business in this business and if I uh, imagine if you work for the uh, Department of Transportations uh, they got uh, you know each day I they will have uh, a group of geotech engineers within the Department of Transportations Caltrain you know they have a special group of geotechnical engineers just take care of the uh, the foundations of <coughs> of all the uh, bridges, the bridges uh, stay wise, and uh, many of the bridge or highway actually is is supported by MSC wall. And if you work for the um, uh, the uh, FHWA, the Federal Highway uh, Authorities, uh, they you know they have a lot of geotech engineers like uh, uh, maintain uh, you know uh, take care, taking care of the uh, federal highways and pretty much like you know. Uh, 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 main majority of work is this uh, MSC wall designs and constructions. Okay, so um, in conclusions on our introductions of MSC walls, um, here is so your good pictures of uh, again like uh, we cap all the components uh, that uh, our MSC wall has. First, you have um, have a face. It could be it could be sloping at an, an angle. But uh, M MSE wall make it possible that you have a 90, or also very common, that you have a 90 uh, degree uh, vertical wall. And um, pretty much, and then like uh, the whole uh, reinforcements go in, well, this like uh, the reinforcements, the reinforcements go into your backfield soils. So pretty much like uh, this part work together as a whole. So you, you got uh, a reinforced stru earth structure. Um, so this is a little bit like a 3D picture right here. So uh, this whole block, uh, the idea is this whole block stay together. Uh, you have the face on the front and then the reinforcement go into the backfield. And uh, you have control on, um, so the main design part is like, you know, uh, what type of uh, facing you want to be and also what reinforcements uh, you want to be uh, it can be two main kinds again right the extensible and also the inextendable uh, the inextendable one uh, could, uh, could be steel so you have a steel uh, reinforcements which is expensive but like uh, the good thing about it is uh, it's relatively uh, more predictable if you use like uh, in exact in extendable materials uh, as uh, uh, reinforcements. Or well, the other choice, you'll be cheaper if you use uh, material like a uh, geosynthetic. You could be a geotextiles. Then you have the wrap face type of a uh, 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 MSC wall or geogrid. So those like uh, uh, plastic uh, polymer uh, materials. Uh, um, uh, uh, holding the sand, the back fields uh, together, and again the whole thing work as a block, and uh, you have uh, the control on the reinforcements and also the back field soil. So you know you design you know what goes into this this block. Pretty much, you know this is the whole thing you you design for, and you will be sitting on um, on the foundation soils. We talk about this, like you know the foundation soil will control the. Uh, external uh, stability uh, of the whole thing and like you know again like you know in design part we talk about this too how you know how what factors control the internal uh, stability so f when design for MSC wall there's also two concerns uh, you know on top of like many 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 other things like you know cause uh, 
uh, availability of materials, uh, the drinkage, and you know, all those are important. Uh, but engineer-wise, for geotechnical engineers, we take care of the uh, internal and also the external stability of this earth structure. And also we have like a third of like a backfill material. So uh, this type of material here, you know, I get you design for it. Um, and there also there's also some cut and uh, uh, you know, plays also like all kind of plays also happen for daughter's MSC wall design. So I would think it will be a quite interesting engineering work. Uh, it's, I guess it's a huge business. Uh, if you drive along uh, uh, even urban or even like in you know, the suburban areas uh, uh, supporting the highway or urban area you have uh, uh, whatever slope uh, you know uh, you know in those BC uh, BC downtowns area you see MSE wall uh, uh, you know uh, e everywhere so if you, you know, pay attention it's like you know real soon you know if you realize like you know you, you just when you have a 90 degree wall, um, and you know, have some earth material behind it. It's just an MSC wall. So, and especially if you go to some other places uh, around this world, you know, some more like a dense area and also expensive area somewhere like Japan, like Tokyo, or somewhere our, our financial district like Hong Kong, you see a lot of like uh, those MSC wall. Uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in the urban, in, in the, uh, urban uh, setting. So what good about, what is the good thing about those MSE wall, uh, you know, compare with the uh, gravity wall that we learned uh, previous, in the previous lecture. Um, the, the, the plus sign, the good thing about it is uh, uh, you can use a relatively simple and uh, uh, rapid construction procedure and do not require large uh, structure constructions uh, equipments. This is true that, like you know, within the uh, the the backfill, you know, it's a little bit more complicated, right? You have those geo grid, and also you have uh, geo textile. You make sure you wrapping the face, and you realize that actually many of them is a repeating like a procedure. Uh, you can. Spell it like you know in the uh, in the specifications. So leaf after leaf, you know, is quite repeatable. And the other thing is, think about it. If you don't want to go this way, you know, very likely, you know, if you, you if you need to make a tall, make a high wall, then um, you need to have a a facing a face a wall that like you know uh, require deep foundations. At that time, you know, you will be expensive. You know, you you know, you need to go deep. The more like uh, you go further down, you know, the more. Expensive it is. You would drive for piles or whatever. You know, you won't be you won't be uh, uh, cheap at all. Relatively, like you know, you especially go 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 into the ground. Uh, you know, that would be expensive. Uh, but if you are doing MSE wall, like everything above grade, you will be much more uh, accessible and also you know uh, uh, construction wise, you know, you will be uh, easier and cheaper. And also like. This one, uh, MSU wall design, uh, you don't need like a very specialized, uh, craftsmanship and also like other special skill for constructions as if like, you know, dealing with, uh, deep foundations. And many, many of it is a repeating procedure and you can specify it. So, uh, not too bad at all. Uh, you require less site preparations and, um, you also like, uh, need less space in front of the structure. For constructions operations because again like everything that will be above grade you know you will be make uh, your life easier without those like a heavy machines so think about it you need to like a mobilize uh, uh, a dual weight uh, to could go to site for pile driving you know uh, have mobilizing the heavy machines the the, the, the the hammer the diesel hammer get on site so, you know you need to make sure like you know you have a lot of uh, space uh, just to help the uh, diesel uh, helmet uh, to transport on site you know that that could be a nightmare uh, in t or very expensive in terms of construction management already rather than like you know you're doing everything above grade now then uh, much more lightweight um, so reduce like a wide of way uh, acquisitions again like no heavy equipment spread already less less uh, heavy equipment uh, make a life much easier 
and you don't you do not need a rigid and yielding foundations uh, now like you know uh, you don't need like a uh, uh, different foundations to make a life easier and MSC structure uh, especially for the geo grid type of uh, or geo textile type of uh, or MSC structure you can take more def uh, deformations because the, the, the reinforcements those are ex extendable so uh, usually you have more like a tolerance in some of the spacement for MSC structure which is a good thing uh, usually it's cheaper uh, for doing MSC walls and also uh, now uh, it is technical feasible to go as tall as 25 meters and in some case like in there's some K history uh, you know, MSC wall were built you will be like ex extremely challenging but it, it happens that uh, some K history the tall, the walls can go as high as 50 meters uh, how about how about the disadvantage of MSC wall? Well, first, like uh, they require relatively large space behind the wall. So, uh, if you work on a a job that, like you know, uh, you you have a walk slope or like you know, you don't have the property of ownerships uh, extend into the wall, then or like you know, other like structure right behind the wall, then you know. Uh, you have a, uh, a foundations right there to blocking you then um, MSC wall is not would not be feasible and also uh, MSC wall again like you know uh, this require the interactions between the backfield soil and the geo grid or like whatever like reinforcements so it's always preferable or sometimes it's a must to have a granular material such that like you know the 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 uh 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 the uh angularities will help you to grab on uh the engage with the enforcement so uh if you, if your site is there's a lack of granular soils then you know you will be expensive you know to the case that you know sometimes like you know transportation costs of the uh uh granular material may be even more expensive than uh, building a deep foundation for your gravity wall. In that case, you may want to go for the uh, gravity wall uh, without any reinforcements, because just because you don't have a uh, uh, accessible uh, uh, granular materials. And also, like uh, you need like a, a suitable design criteria to adjust uh, corrosions of steel. If you're using steel, you know steel is always like you know a trouble when there's a water, so we need to be be careful on that. And also, if uh, if you're using geosynthetics, like if you have any like uh, uh, you know special concerns about the degradations of the polymer reinforcements in the ground, then MSC wall is not is not a good choice, especially if your if your site has a lot of uh, organic matter, and you have a hard time to uh, to remove them, then like you know MSC wall may be a no go. And last but not least, uh, for this to work, it highly relies on uh, uh, the quality of your uh, uh, geotextile or like any form of reinforcements. So, um, you know, the, you fall into a couple of liability issues over there. If you don't get like good material at the first place, then this, this will be challenging and, and, and it won't, and it won't work. So like, you know, you need to make sure like uh, you have good, like a contractor give you a uh, good material at the first place. And also, uh, the, uh, the interactions between the soils and the geo material, uh, geo reinforcements. Uh, sometimes like characterize thing down could be challenging you need to find a very good lab that can do a pull out test for you the more ideal cases nowadays is like uh, you do performance uh, uh, based uh, observations which means that uh, you embed sensors in the ground and uh, you know see the how how the whole thing performs if you can afford that or like you know uh, if, if you're large enough project you have different phases you can learn something uh, from your phase one, I guess some preliminary data on constructions work that you have a lot for you to adjust uh, your design in phase two and phase three. That is very ideal. If not, like maybe at least you want to run some uh, pull out tests um, from a reliable lab, and then like you know, and the day, uh, 
you know, who pay for it and like, you know, uh, who, who should like, uh, cover the insurance, like on, uh, if things not working well or like, you know, the worst case scenario, if, if a bad thing happens, like, you know, who should carry the liability? You know, those could be, uh, uh, could be a very complicated, like a situation as an engineer's, uh, you don't want to get into and, you know, it's part of the game for the MSC wall. Okay, we talk about, um, for MSC wall, de MSC wall design, it's important to uh, take care of two parts, uh, for, uh, both the external stability and also internal uh, stability. So let's look at the, um, this symbol of design flow chart here for the external stability. And you take out from the uh, uh, the Federal Highway uh, Authority Manual, uh, 2005. Um, so, first of all, um, all the geotech uh, investigations need to go beforehand, so uh, you will know about the soil properties um, based on the drop requirements. Uh, uh, very likely, one of the major uh, you know, uh, the dictations or the uh, design constraint will be the uh, how tall the, the wall need to be. So um, with the wall the geometry and also soil properties, then it's ready to, you know, further look at the uh, performance criteria, like the life cycles of the, uh, of the structure, uh, what type of uh, uh, life loading or um, uh, surcharge, uh, either dead loading or life loading need to uh, sustain at the grade level uh, on top of the uh, MSC wall um, and then like you know uh, next uh, you will start with a preliminary sizing so this sizing what you talk about uh, mainly um, is how you know uh, the length we talk about the length of the uh, of major is the length of the reinforcement so how further you need to go into the wall uh, for your MSC uh, wall design because pretty much like the the height of the wall is many times is dictated by the job you know uh, you need to have a 10 meter wall that you design for to meet the grade level or the elevations you know, 10 meters 10 meter but now it's a matter of what kind of like a backfill uh, uh, what type of uh, uh, reinforcements would that be steel or geo grid or would that be a rough face for using geotech style what kind of like a raw materials that you're going to use and all those things uh, will will uh, will uh, make a decision so like you know will will make a requirements like how further uh, the reinforcements need to uh, go into so you'll be the designer uh, then you need to uh, figure that out but first, you start with a preliminary sizing, so you will uh, uh, make a, like a, a first design, first guess uh, based on some guidelines that like uh, uh, you can find in the uh, design manual, uh, the federal again the federal high rate of forty manuals. Uh, so you get a preliminary like a uh, length to start with, and then like. Uh, you you will you will have an understanding that uh, this may not be the uh, finalized you know because also again you know uh, changing the length that you may need to be and uh, no, or maybe you know uh you find out uh, uh, you'll be too expensive to go too further uh into your uh the job criteria or the pop property of white prevent you to go like you know uh too long then you need to maybe go back to to iterate the design uh, progress thing of something else uh, now you cannot go too long based on this materials or based on this wall face then like you know uh, you you may find out the web uh, the web geotest style doesn't work because like you go too thirdly into the wall then then you may need to change the geo grid or like even like a steel uh, reinforcement so uh, so everything start with a preliminary sizing design here after you have it, then you fine tunes later. Uh, the next, uh, well, this is like a preliminary sizing is uh, not only applied to external stability. Next, we talk about the uh, internal uh, stability. You will be related to. But anyways, like uh, you start with a preliminary sizing, and then uh, you will check all this uh, 
criteria uh, for to fulfill the static external stability, which are the sliding, the overturning, the bearing capacity, the slope stability, uh, the overall slope stability, and also salamence. Uh, the slope stability will be covered by other classes. So, uh, and uh, you know, we only have a couple of weeks here for this MSE wall design. Uh, so uh, we cannot talk cover all topics. So uh, uh, at least for this lecture, I will leave the sl slope stability. You know, belongs to the CE five six six, and also the salmon. You know, uh, we will talk a little bit more of further in details for CE five six six. So for this class, MSE wall designs like uh, later slides. I will go into details on uh, about the uh, the design for the side, the sliding, uh, overturning, uh, bearing capacity. But at the end of the day, those are as equally important as like uh, the other two when we are talking about the external stability. So uh, after like you know, uh, uh, you check that like a uh, preliminary sizings uh, fulfill uh, all this uh, criteria, then you will be uh, uh, the reinforcement length that you're happy about at least for the external stability. And if anything like it doesn't work here, you need to go back. To change your uh, sizing, and you know, some worst case scenario, you may need, even need to change uh, uh, again. Like if this, is like if if the reinforcements you find out, like uh, uh, you can afford that to be like that long, because many times like you go thirty into like uh, outside your property of weight, then like uh, uh, you need to change maybe the phase and also change uh, the design for the phase and also change uh, connections. And also change or maybe change the filling materials. Uh, last but not least, if you are uh, practicing in California, you also need to check the seismic stability for MSE wall. MSE wall. Uh, I don't think we have much time to go in details uh, to talk about soil now and also talk about uh, seismic stability for uh, uh, overall for uh, uh, earth structure design. Uh, maybe like uh, at the end of semester, I will put some guidelines on recommended readings. Uh, but it seems like uh, we may not uh, able to afford another lecture to talk about uh, seismic seismic state. Okay, how about the um, internal uh, stability? Uh, when we really zoom in and look at uh, the case that how the soil and uh, uh, reinforcements uh, interact with each other. Uh, we soon enough uh, realize this is a really complicated uh, phenomenon. Well, um, first of all, you have the all the soil part, uh, pa uh, particles. It, it was under the uh, it is under the um, the normal normal stress, so it is uh, pushing against uh, the reinforcements, uh, which create frictions. And uh, when like you know when this part. This uh, part of the uh, reinforcement is connected to the phase, the wall phase, which means like uh, when the wall try to in active conditions, try to pull away from the soils or try to being like in you know, mobile mobilized away from the soils, it create a pull out force on those reinforcements, geo grid or um, a steel bar, whatever it is. So you try to pull the um, the reinforcements. Out of this soil, and uh, this uh, phenomenon create like a uh, frictions, um, and we are smart, we are engineers, and you know uh, we we want to design our reinforcements, our man-made materials, uh, provide the best performance to stabilize or prevent uh, uh, you know the pull out actions to be happens. So when we design for the geo grid or other like a geotextile or uh, uh, even the steel bar, like you know, we will make uh, uh, like a geometry that uh, you know you have a li little bit like a hump here. So it will provide a passive resistance when the uh, geo grid or reinforcements uh, are being pulled out. So. We 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 learned that from the uh, co uh, the coefficients of uh, earth coefficients, right? Uh, we learn about the active, and also we learn about about the passive conditions, and uh, you know in between is the rest. Uh, the horizontal stress 
that create from passive conditions because when when like you know uh, when when your structure or this case like you know a uh, micro size uh, you have a little bit of uh, uh, man-made material push against the soils it created passive uh, loading conditions and uh, which is the highest stress uh, higher highest loading uh, it could be like almost it could be like a 10 times uh, higher to the active conditions and uh, maybe three to five times higher than the uh, at rest conditions so you create a much higher resistance like you know up uh, at this uh, for this like um, uh, geomaterials uh, uh, provided by those greed and uh, greed and also uh, uh, textile geotextile materials and that's what we want so those are kind of like the geo greed uh, on this design here and here is another like you know um, geo greed here uh, when you have all this like a square and all this like a uh, kind of like a net right here so the horizontal bar here the horizontal alignment create the path again create the uh, passive uh, conditions uh, when uh, the, the reinforcements are is being pulled out uh, when you attach to the uh, to the, uh, the, the wall face so that's 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 the basic idea of a geo grid and internally like uh, what we worry about is uh, the stability if like this geo grid break or like you know or the soil fail internally the you know the the, the MSC wall will fail uh, when it's just subject to a high enough loading where's the loading come from the loading very likely could be from the uh, surcharge. Uh, uh, at the top grade, you know, um, many 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 cases this may be uh, supporting like a, a highway or uh, supporting any like a, a life low or that low, you know, that is above uh, the 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 top level or the top grade of the wall. So if you keep loading on it, uh, you know, eventually uh, uh, either externally or internally will fail. So that's one scenario is like you know too much surcharge like when you fail or the other case could be um, uh, water so that's why water 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 uh, the drinking conditions uh, you know if you have a water build up internally then um, uh, you will de decrease the effective stress and we learned that uh, in you know undergrad cars a C366 um, the more coulomb uh, ferro envelope tell us uh, if the vertical effective stress decrease then so so does the soil strength this is described by the more uh, uh, envelope of more quantum like a theory but anyways um, so um, the water could cause like a failure and also uh, to, uh, other than those like a static loading or hydrostatic uh, water pressure change of it um, it also may be like a seismic when you have uh, uh, dynamic loading, when earthquake happens, uh, so that's why California is very important. Uh, and our MSE wall design in California will be much challenging in some way in the East Coast, because uh, in California you have the seismic design, uh, uh, you know, on top of those uh, static uh, requirements. So, but anyways. Um, so that's the micro view of uh, the soil reinforcement interactions. Um, again, the, the federal uh, highway authority 2005 manual, we provide like a full chart to talk about the design uh, of MSE wall. Uh, this time is for internal uh, ex uh, stability. And that's a lot of different details that, uh, you know, uh, it, it, you need to go through uh, for for MSE wall design and uh, again um, two main categories when it comes to MSE wall design that is in extensible uh, reinforcement so this is the uh, the steel strip because uh, uh, the reinforcements is is, is very stiff uh, compared to the soil so you, you know you won't you won't you won't like a deform uh, relatively you won't deform 
and the other case is the extendable one extensible one so this is uh, the geotextile or the uh, geogrid so it's plastic material it's polymer so polymer is uh, uh, is uh, much more deformable when you compare to steel uh, you know uh, and the interactions between those polymer and soil will be really complicated so we talk about all this micro behavior you know if you have two very complicated material that uh, interact with each other is it's a nightmare is 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 extremely difficult to to uh, to model it so you know we talk about some uh, simplified uh, analytical analytical procedure uh, later in this lecture and very likely, if you want to capture this uh, accurately, you, you need a three D finite elements, or or at least at least two D. I think two D will do the work uh, for 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 many cases too. Um, so a two D finite elements or finite difference model that you know allows you to input uh, ten or twenty uh, parameters for each material to describe the uh, nonlinear uh, plastic you know stress string relationship for them and also stress not talk about stress dependence and nowadays we even look at a uh, thermal dependence like a uh, properties so all this uh, complicated uh, like material interactions uh, you know come together so uh, but anyways uh, uh, you were really complicated um, so that's why this uh, simplified it quote unquote simplified it full chart you see many uh, components right there. Each of them, uh, we need to, we need to look at the uh, uh, reinforcements, uh, load calculations. Uh, we think about what is the maximum loading scenario. Uh, connections to the phase are very important. Uh, the backfill, you know, how how does the backfill uh, affect uh, the performance of the wall, and also. Uh, uh, the stress uh, by uh, you know uh, uh, translate to the reinforcements and what is the maximum uh, tensile stress that like uh, those reinforcements can handle so all these components like uh, are required and then like you know once me meeting all these requirements then uh, <coughs> from the uh, preliminary uh, uh, design on the length of the reinforcements then uh, we can adjust or uh, we can finalize uh, the length that required to uh, stabilize against the pull out and at the end of the day like you know you also need to think of the uh, facing element for the stress at the wall phase so that's that's all come together and um, again we only have like a couple of weeks on this topic you know this top you know engineers can build their entire career on this topic or like you know if you go to a uh, uh, more uh, comprehensive uh, graduate program uh, like the one at Texas Austin they have a uh, one class they have one class just talk about one entire graduate level class the whole semester just talk about MSE wall design the geo geosynthetic uh, geos uh, geosynthetic uh, uh, applications you know but like here, like you know, uh, we have limited time. Uh, so out of this full chart, uh, we will focus on a couple of them. We we'll talk a little bit more. Particularly, the most important one is how to determine the maximum uh, tensile stress for the uh, uh, reinforcements. And so, so does uh, this is important that uh, the uh, Federal Highway Manual it has uh, detailed documentations on how to come up with it and. Uh, intensive research, you know, this is a very hot uh, research topic, uh, uh, still ongoing uh, in these two decades. Uh, try to find a better method or design procedure that's the uh, research about on how to model uh, the interactions between soil and uh, 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 geogrid or geotextile. So this is another table um, from the uh, Federal Highway Authority Design Manual. Uh, this one a little bit more updated from the 2009. So all those manuals are available on Canfax. Uh, feel free to, to read it and have a copy. So you may help you in the future, uh, you know, when you come, ac come across a job that 
uh, related to MSC uh, MSC wall, and and I bet you like you know there's a lot of different projects. Uh, as long as you uh, you know uh, work as civil engineers, uh, you will come across of uh, this type of uh, uh, we enforce the earth structure. Um, you know even though you, you're not specializing in geotech and especially uh, specializing in uh, this business but like you know uh, right like these civil engineers like you know you make you know you know you know a career a lifetime of career or like, you know soon enough you may come across uh, with this topic uh, in uh, any f uh, any kind of degree uh, you know uh, get involved but anyways like uh, uh, the 2009 menu provide like uh, uh, universals like a uh, uh, design chart or, or like in you know, a design procedure that um, try to capture both external stability and also uh, internal stability so uh, when you come across a MSE wall design job then like you know you may check all the steps here where really, like you know your your design fulfilling so uh, let, let's look at what kind of forces are uh, within um, or like you know externally um, that is uh, acting on uh, uh, MSE uh, system. So um, here uh, we got a very simple uh, MSE uh, wall right there. Um, so the box that you see is mean to be the MSE wall. Um, you know, uh, so this is the face right there. And with all the uh, reinforcements inside, so all those are the uh, the reinforcements. Um, and um, the face, the reinforcements, and also um, uh, the soils that within the reinforcements, they all act as a systems. So it's kind of like a huge box uh, that, like you know, we geotechnically uh, uh, make, and it has a surcharge. Uh, adding on top of it so it could be like a, a live loaf like you know if it is supporting a, a highway or embankment uh you know part of the embankment then you know the all the vehicles is, is going above uh a part of the uh the life low uh you know sometimes it could be a dead load you know it's a, supporting like a structure uh above it so uh and uh behind the wall you have the uh and uh, you know, uh, native for uh, or, or some of the backfield soil extended, uh, you know, into our cut or fill up our cut. So uh, we have a uh, 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 loading that we can use like a wanking or, or coulomb that flying out uh, horizontally. So that is like you know, it gives us a horizontal loading right here. Oh, let me put it here. So we got like a horizontal loading adding on to the wall. Uh, we learned it in the previous uh, or two lectures ago. Um, those like earth structures or earth pressure is a tri uh, triangular shape loading. So he's adding on the wall. And which is this one, right? And then you add, add like a uh, one third uh, from the bottoms of the heights. That's the locations of this loading. So this uh, earth pressure, and um, we proved this previously already, is the area of the triangles. And uh, here we have the uh, unit weight of the backfield. Uh, times the height squared, so pretty much is the um, area of the triangles. And here we have the uh, Ka of the field. And the Ka, uh, we learned it previously, is tangent square 45 degree minus 3 over 2. So we have an angle, friction angle there. So we have this uh, loading uh, adding on uh, behind the wall, and also we have the loading from the surcharge. So
So we have another loading from the surcharge. So let's call this to be uh, our first uh, false number one. And false number two is from the surcharge. So there's, there will be another loading from the surcharge. And it's a uniform loading. So it's, it's a rectangular shape. Notice uh, the uh, loading that uh, we designed for the MSC wall to sustain. And since this is a uh, rectangular shape, so uh, the force will add at the midpoint. So this force here from the surcharge, again, this is the area, so it will be equals to the surcharge times the height, and also the Ka. And uh, this, let's call this, this uh, force number two. So we have two like horizontal force like, you know, uh, adding on the wall because of the surcharge and also because of the, uh, you need to sustain the, uh, the backfield soil behind it. And um, also we have the force that go like vertically, downward, because of the, um, the weight of the backfield. So let's call it here uh, the the soil here is the reinforcement. So the unit weight of the reinforcement soils pretty much against time the area. So this is like uh, the weight, uh, kind of like the unit weight times the volume. So we got the force, um, the force per unit length. Uh, that's what we got. Uh, so this is the unit weight and then times the area. So we got the uh, force per unit length uh, into and out of the, uh, the page of the paper. And we have another force that is acting uh, from the surcharge. So the uh, vertical force number two will be equals to the uh, the distributed load times the length of the uh, of the uh, uh, re retaining structure. And if we sum all the force uh, from the uh, vertical directions. Will be equals to um, first uh, v1 plus v2, um, and then that would be equals to the uh, the normal force. So here's the normal force that's uh, adding upward. So this weight here is equals to v uh, v1, the weight of the uh, uh, reinforcement soil. Um, so um, you we have the or the, the weight of the total like a reinforcements. You know you got you have soils and also you have uh, mainly you know, the soils and uh, uh, the, also the geotextile and geogrid, which also account in the unit weight of the reinforcement systems. So um, that is the uh, vertical force and um, this uh, normal force is that like a react from the ground will be uh, away from the center because the whole thing is not symmetric. Uh, you know, you have a wall face that, that will be heavier and then it's kind of attached it. So we have all the reinforcements right there, right? So you have like a heavier face. So that's why uh, the reaction force uh, will be uh, uh, biased to, to work the face. And you, re you have an eccentricity right there. And uh, it's part of the design that we need to make sure this offset would not be uh, too far away from the center. Otherwise, you will suffer from a, a overturning uh, a failure. But anyways, um, so the whole thing, you know, uh, we we act as a as a stress box right here with the dimensions of the uh, L minus two times the uh, eccentricity, and the center of it is uh, of the stress box. Uh, will be the uh, uh, the uh, normal force or the resultant force uh, vertically, and this is a, a certain distance away from the uh, away from the uh, center, and also like you know uh, we also need to check sliding, so you know we also expecting a frictional force uh, at the bottoms from the uh, uh, foundations uh, soils, uh, the frictions between the foundation soils and also the 
uh, reinforcement structure. Okay, so let's look at um, the uh, the details of external stability. Um, in the pre slides, uh, we specialize uh, all the uh, forces, adding on the MSC structure already, and also uh, we talk about uh, uh, the overall design chart. Uh, for external stability, we look at you need to look at the sliding, over turning, uh, bearing capacity, and uh, so forth and so forth. Um, so here we let's uh, look at the issue of sliding uh, eccentricity, uh, which also like related to overturning. Okay, so uh, first about sliding. So if we look at the sliding. The factor of safety of that will be uh, need to be at least uh, greater than 1.5 per the uh, authority of uh, highway uh, agency. And uh, like, uh, again, like you know, they uh, they they are uh, the, the one of the driver of the huge uh, markets in the United States. But if you go to practice elsewhere, or like you know, you have uh, 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 and other clients that other than the federal government, then uh, beware the factor of safety requirements will be changed, especially like you know, you practice uh, in other part of this world. Uh, so the factor of safety for sliding will be equals to the weight and then the tangent fee. So this is will be kind of like um, 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 the uh, frictions, coefficients, and then derived by the summations of the horizontal force. So the factor of safety of sliding, uh, we and we read that like on the vertical loading, right? Uh, so this event, this sensor is the vertical link, vertical loading on the top part, which is the resistance force. Uh, we don't count on uh, the surcharge because many times uh, the surcharge uh, could be a live load. And if it's a live load, then like uh, it can be there, uh, like you know, uh, not all the time. So uh, in case you'll be absent in some uh, scenario, like you know, you cannot count on the, the, for example, you cannot count on the weight of vehicles like uh, driving through the highway because you know most of the time it's not there. Uh, so for the fact of safety of sliding, uh, the resistance part on the top, pretty much we just. Uh, Count on the uh, the vertical loading, and this tangent fee is the uh, foundations, the, the frictional angles of the foundation soil, and the driving force will be those horizontal force. So will be the uh, uh, the uh, F1 and F2 we talked about previously. So we plug in the informations there. So this is the vertical loading. Times the, which is like a dead weight right there, the, uh, times the tension friction angles, and then plus the summations of the two horizontal force. So that, that gives you the uh, effect of safety uh, for slide against sliding. And the second part, uh, we'll be checking the uh, eccentricity. And it has a requirement that this is less than one sixth, one sixth of the uh, the total length uh, of the MSC structure. And this can be calculated as half of the dimensions minus. Uh, we take the moment and find out the uh, the distance away from the corner. So pretty much we are taking moment at this point. 
at the corner of the uh, of the uh, of the MSE wall. So ML here is the resistance moment, and the other one here is the overturning moment. May we do our math. Uh, we calculate the both the uh, resistance uh, moment, pretty much pretty much come from the uh, the vertical loading. So this, be very careful with this. Could be uh, you know the V two part uh, again is the uh, the live flow. You know. Uh, Many times we don't want to count on it because we cannot be sure it's always there. So be very careful on those terms. Uh, be very careful on those terms. It could be equal to zero. Um, and then minus the uh, the driving force, which is the loading behind the wall. And then the whole thing is divided by the uh, the summations of the uh, vertical loading. Again, this will be optionals, whether you want to count on count on this or not. The third one. Is the overturning so this one to factor safety required greater than um, 2.0 and the factor safety for overturnings will be again is resisting overdriving so the resisting again we just count on the uh, vertical loading and then this one will be the driving. So uh, the difference between overturning and uh, eccentricity is like uh, uh, for the eccentricity. Um, I take it back because like uh, sorry, you 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 want to consider V two uh, the life flow even temporary. But like you want to uh, make sure like you know uh, in the presence of the uh, life flow or uh, temporary life flow uh you not offset too much so you want to consider the uh, eccentricity uh, when you calculate uh you, uh, you want to uh, consider those uh, temporary life flow when you calculate the eccentricity but when you uh, calculate the overturning moment um, then you don't want to count on the benefit of those temporary uh, life load so that will how you calculate for the overturning moments, factor of safety. And also, uh, we need to check the bearing capacity. So the verticals are uh, loading. So this is from the uh, loading demand will be equals to uh, the summations of the vertical force, V1 and V2. And then divided by uh, the area. So this is too much the force divided by the area. And the area we just con considered uh, one dimensions. So it's kind of, again, it's per unit length into and out of the page. So divided by the length of the stress box that like uh, we anticipate like the reaction force uh, we'll be adding on the wall, uh, at the bottom of the wall. So that will be the uh, vertical stress. And uh, the factor of safety. So again, this will be in pounds. Uh, so this will be, be uh, pounds per unit length. And for um, the calculating the effect of safety will be the ultimate uh, soil capacity. So it, it kind of like, again, like a shallow foundations again. Uh, we don't spend too much time here to go back to our foundation design, but like using those uh, 
uh, analytical form like the Vertic, uh, Vertic uh, solutions 1975 and 1976 would help you to find the uh, the ultimate the soil capacity and then derived by the uh, the loading demand that we just calculate vertical stress and then make sure this is greater than 2.0 and on top of that, we also you also need to check the settlements and and also the overall uh, slope stability for the site and those like we will need to ref, uh, refer back to C five six six. Right, um, internal stability design. Um, the current uh, internal state stability design highly driven by uh, some spec, uh, largely from the federal highway operations, um, because. Uh, they are actually they are kind of like the largest uh, owner uh, of MSE wall in the country. So many design uh, is uh, driven by them, and also they are the one that uh, give our research uh, money. So uh, the different uh, institutions, research institutions, uh, mainly universities, uh, did a lot of like uh, state of art type of research. Uh, try to advance uh, this technology. And like you know, end up will uh, improve the design, uh, and it has been like uh, for internal, uh, you know, uh, finding the internal stability or like a better way, a better design to uh, to capture what actually happens for for that complex uh, uh, interactions between geo uh, grid or uh, like you know any like uh, reinforcements and soils, you know, it's it's, it's very complicated and. To a point that, like you know, uh, the current the current like uh, state of art type of a uh, design procedure is on the conservative side. Because uh, again, like you know, if you just use a simplified analytical approach, uh, it's really hard to capture the complex uh, behavior of what really happening for the soil reinforcements, like uh, interactions. Anyway, it's like uh, the current inter internal stability limit state designed as documented in in those design manual uh, I uh, the two main references I put on uh, on Canvax already so those are from the federal highway authorities and the one is from 2005 and the other, the other one is for 2009 uh, those I get designed mainly based on variants of cast type pack uh, active wedge method uh, it has the pitting load in wall uh, which has been uh, empirically adjusted to match uh, measure values under operation conditions. So it's, it's like a, a few key terms over there. First is like uh, is this is uh, empirically adjusted. So this is pretty much based on empirical correlations where like uh, we have a lot of like uh, for research or for field testing or field instrumentations we have uh, some we call the values uh, you know. Uh, research very likely will be a, a physical model, you know, uh, to some, sometimes it's one to one scale or like, you know, a one to two scale, uh, that like uh, we mimically construct in the lab with all the uh, fines, uh, 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 instrumentations and also well controlled environments. So you keep loading those, uh, model tests until you fail. So we get good data. And then after we have the data, then we can establish like uh, analytical solutions empirically to uh, correlate uh, uh, what we predict and what we measure. So that's that's the current state of approach now. And uh, is is now is true that like uh, the sensor to technology, the sensor technology has advanced a lot. So uh, there's a lot more like a few data available now. Like you know, if a real world construct. Uh, sometimes uh, we embed uh, sensors uh, in, in, behind the wall, and then like you know, two times, uh, then we keep collecting data. So that's helped too. And the current uh, design procedure, uh, it, it is sam uh, it is uh, embedded with the uh, LRFD, the load and resistance factor design uh, framework. So which is like you know. Uh, 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 Kind of like a correction factors. Uh, usually, you see that with uh, with the term phi right there. So you see this 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 term a lot. So those are the correction factors that we uh, applied for different type of loading. 
you know, if you talk about structural chaos, you see this a lot. Like, you know, you sometimes say times one to one point one uh, to the life flow, and then maybe one point three to the debt load. You know, uh, that those are the RFD method, and you will see this uh, in those design menu for MSE structure too. So the basic design uh, procedures are uh, very minimal. Uh, yes, uh, when it ha what happened, it fell uh, internally. So we have, have already talked about externally, but now we uh, try to also look at you know uh, what may happen uh, when it fell uh, internally. So eventually, like you need to fulfill both two conditions, right? Both externally and also both internally. So uh, for internal failure, uh, there could be different kind of uh, failure mechanisms. Could be internal uh, 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 rupture. So this deal with like uh, our individuals, uh, individual uh, reinforcements or like you know they could fail together or they could like you know uh, fail either one of it uh, so uh, for example this highly deal with the the, the material the properties of the material for example if, a, if you have a steel bar or steel strip a strip then um, you know the yield strength, so you may want to ensure that uh, each uh, strip that you carry the loading is greater than the factors of safety times the yield strength uh, of the materials. So uh, you know, this this won't be too too hard to do uh, for checking the factor of safety, and uh, we will do one examples for that. Another uh, failure possibility of failures is uh, if there are the connections. So, uh, you know, each fail, each like a uh, fail, uh, each inform reinforcements is connected at the phase. So the connections between the reinforcements and the phase is uh, one of the weakest points that we uh, we need to check. So it highly depends on what type of like a material you use, what type of phasing material you use. So uh, we don't uh, for this class we don't have uh, time to go through the details. Uh, you know, I I leave this like uh, for you to read the manual for your future good. Uh, future practice, uh, you know, make sure you also check the connection failure. Third is like a pull out uh, failure. So uh, we'll talk a bit more about this. Uh, so when the whole thing mobilizes, uh, we want to ensure that uh, the effective distance. So when this being mobilized, uh, it will be, you know, the, uh, each reinforcements, reinforcements will fall into two parts. One is the effective resistance. Uh, the other one is kind of like the active uh, mobilized uh, uh, portion of it. So you want to ensure like, you know, you have enough uh, anchor at the back to try to uh, make sure like, you know, the whole thing being stable. So we need to check uh, the uh, pull out failure. So the design procedure is like first, like uh, uh, we identify the critical uh, failure surface. We talk about that. And then we will determine the maximum tensile force uh, in the reinforcements, and all. Uh, and also, like you know, we need to check. Uh, so here, at this point, uh, this procedure number three actually is you need to check three of them. So uh, not only the pool, uh, the pool of failure. So that's like a three items right there. In fact, so that's like three items of uh, you need to check. So three A, three B, and three C. So the internal rupture and uh, connections failures and poor examples. So you need to check three of them, and uh, uh, we'll do it at ex an examples at the end of this class. Uh, I will demonstrate how to do the internal ruptures and also we'll do the how to how to do the pull out uh, failure check. Uh, the connection ones, uh, you know, uh, that will be uh, too much for this class because it highly depends on which type of phase and connections uh, you are using. Uh, I do think like, you know, for the future uh, research that you need to do uh, when you do your own MSC wall design. Okay, first, uh, a failure surface. So, um, the uh, design menu, the Federal Highway uh, Agency uh, Authorities uh, Agency design menu, it has a, uh, like a projected pot uh, potential uh, failure surface internally um when this MSE system fell. So uh, here is two design graph that they provide in the menu. 
and it has two kinds. First, uh, uh, is um, the one above is for the one that um, being in extensible, which means like you know when you when you have uh, uh, metallic reinforcements, then uh, that is the projected uh, potential failure surface, and uh, realize this uh, uh, this like a failure surface. In fact, is uh, is a boundary between two parts. One is active, the other one is is uh, resistance. So, which means like uh, when the wall face is mobilized, um, the active zone pretty much like you know is is in deformation is in uh, they assume is in in movement. So, which means like the frictional force, uh, you know, uh, between the reinforcement and soil has been consumed already. So what it relies on is the um, the later part, the resistance zone. So um, that's that's why, like you know, this is the effective syst uh, system or effective length that you want to find out, and we talk about how to calculate that. Anyway, it's like you know, uh, based on um, the systems. Uh, first, if, you, if if it is inextensible, uh, pretty much like you know, um, the tipping point is happening at halfway. Uh, the top half is uh, the top half of the wall face. Uh, we assume this like active zone is 0.3 times the uh, times the height of your wall face, and like uh, the bottom half will be like you know uh, will be uh, linearly decreased until like uh, at the very bottom you have the full length uh, being uh, being resistance because this is like kind of like uh, uh, the restraint bone, right? And then when the wall move, uh, you will go this way, the, the wall face. Um, but anyways, uh, so at the bottom is that's like the whole, the the closer you you are the bottoms, the more resistant length that you have. So that is the uh, inextensible. And for the extensible, is pretty much uh, you know it's deformable. The 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 uh, the whole like you know. Um, uh, reinforcements. So yeah, yeah. So you assume it is a triangular wedge when you fell. It's kind of like a, the Coulomb uh, theory. Uh, when the soil fell, uh, you, you fell as a wedge. So here, like you know, you, you they they assume it's extensible. So the whole thing, you know, behave like soil, but you will be a reinforced soil, a stronger soil, and you fell as as a wedge. And um, you know the angle degree. Uh, you can calculate the uh, the the angles right there, and then like uh, from there, uh, you can assume um, the the exchange of active zones and resistance resistance zone will go linearly linear, linearly uh, downward. So uh, those are the design guidelines now uh, for the current um, available uh, you know design procedure. And how accurate it is, you know, uh, it's hard to tell. You know, the, uh, I don't think like like uh, those like a potential like a fairly surface will be hundred percent or you know uh, get you know you have, feel comfortable of being accurate. But at least that's something you can start from. And uh, I think like a research research has shown that uh, uh, for the. Uh, dual grid type of uh, or the uh, extensible reinforcement type is really hard to predict uh, the failure surface. This one, you know, it's not too bad. Uh, the inextensible one, because again, steel is uh, or metal is uh, much more predictable materials uh, than uh, than those like a def deformable uh, polymer and uh, those like a uh, dual grid or dual textile, dual synthetic type of materials are really hard to be taken ongoing research is still going on and uh, there's uh, more work has been done a lot of work has been done recently and maybe in, uh, very likely uh, in the next five to ten years like there will be updated design guidelines other than than this two uh, design chart on the uh, pot potential fairly surface uh, to be available Okay, next uh, is the um, tensile load on the uh, uh, adding on the reinforcements. So here, so you uh, a very nice, um, very nice uh, picture. Uh, 
demonstrating uh, how how it is calculated. So the T max. So the T max is the expected like a loading, uh, adding on the reinforcements um, based on like a simple uh, calculations. Um, so again, like uh, the loading, we assume that you will only be effective at the resist resistance zone. Because previously we, you know, we identify uh, through the um, the expected failure surface. So uh, uh, we identify two zones. One zone is um, is the active zone, so it it has been mobilized. So like you know the frictions right there is already is, is gone. So only like the L sub E, the later part uh, that that has the resistance. And if we look at this like along this distance, so a different elevations, like you have different like. Uh, uh, length of it, um, and if we look at it, you know, you have a vertical confining stress, so you know the whole thing is frictions. Uh, so you have a vertical stress compressing uh, the soils and the uh, your reinforcement. So this is the vertical stress. Um, so the equations for this uh, formula is uh, S sub V time K sub L time is the vertical stress. So this is the vertical stress. Is uh, you take account into the unit weight of soils times the depth uh, z to the point of the uh, reinforcements, and then pass the surcharge. So uh, you know it depends on whether you want to count on it. Uh, you know, you believe, if you believe like uh, you can count on the surcharge, then um, or actually this is the design. So this is the loading demand. So there's two two parts of it here when you calculating the resistance. Then you may not want to count on the, uh, you know, the temporary or sometime there, sometime not uh, of surcharge. So if you considering the, uh, the the resistance, you don't want to 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 rely on the surcharge. But the loading part, you know, to be safe, you need to consider it. Even though, like you know, you only be there ten percent of its lifetime, you know, it's only for the case that uh, the life flow uh, uh, for a highway. Uh, you know, you have a heavy trucks to drive by, but like you know, uh, but this is the loading part. Like you know, it's, it's there, it's there. You don't want to be like that, that moment, uh, the presence of the uh, heavy truck to fail your uh, MSC wall. So, so the vertical stress you also consider the uh, uh, the surcharge. So you got the sigma v, and uh, it is times uh, k sub r. So what is k sub r? So is this uh, like the um, the coefficients of earth pressure. So these two come together is your horizontal stress. Remember like you know uh, back to CE366 uh, we learned about the horizontal stress equals to K sub naught which is the coefficients at rest time the vertical stress everything need to be effective stress space. Same here you know this need to be effective stress space. Um, but the fact is, uh, you know, this, this K0 with this KR, they're different. So this is at rest, soil only at rest. And here, the case of R is much more complicated. You know, it's, it's not necessarily like at rest. And also, it's not just soil. This case of R, the R stands for reinforcements. So this is a uh, soil uh, reinforcements interactions type of uh, uh, lateral earth pressure coefficients. So, uh, it is not it's not like a, 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 a pure soft parameters. So here's a design chart that put down like a different like a reference menus. Um, so the ash toes like you know is highly like you know related to the uh, 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 the Federal Highway uh, Authority. So these those are United States standards and also depends on what kind of reinforcements. If you have a geosynthetics is equals to one, one of the ratios of the uh, uh, KR divided by KA. So this is the active earth pressure. And you can use like a Rankine or Coulombs to estimate the case of A. So case of A is a solid parameters and case of R is what we need to find out. So uh, for geosynthetics, pretty much like a uh, Geo grid or geo tester material, we assume this case of R is just like the soil. So it's a little bit, uh, a little bit more conservative for there, but that's okay. 
um, or in other sense that like you know tell you we don't know we don't know much about like uh, those uh, performance of uh, of a geo grid or geo uh, geo textile. But anyways, uh, for metal, um, you will uh, depends on the depth from the top of the top of the wall. You know you will be uh, changing, and you can use this design chart to read off or uh, to find out the um, um, the corresponding case of R. So you know you know your uh, you know your depth, and then you know your uh, uh, the looking at, and also you know your uh, materials. For example, if you are using steel uh, steel a uh, strip, so you you know at the bottom of uh, at 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 uh, at the depth of two meter down, then you can read the ratios, um, and then like this is the KL times KA. KA is a solid parameters, so KA times like about 0.5, then that will be your case of R for this case examples. So you know the horizontal stress, and then like it times the uh, tributary um, tributary uh, uh, length. So uh, for examples, you design for this uh, reinforcements. It will take care of uh, this uh, tributary area um, and a tri uh, a tributary length. Same as like the next reinforcements, we take care about this much. Uh, you know, uh, maybe the first one will be take care about this much. So this represent the uh, tributary uh, length that each uh, reinforcements uh, take care of. So that will give you the um, uh, the maximum loading uh, per unit length. So this is stress times the length. So you get like a loading per unit length. The unit length is into and out of the page. Um, so that's how we calculate the the loading demand. Oh sorry, the loading like you know we expect the reinforcement is filling. Um, so how this is a very simple approach. Uh, how accurate is, how accurate is, is it? So there's some research data showing there. Actually, it's not it's not too well. So on the left hand side is using the Ashton simplified method for pretty much the simple equations that we talked about previously. And uh, our you know, research has been done through our uh, in situ uh, instrumentations or lab or, or physical lab mo uh, model. Uh, they use the equations to calculate uh, the loading versus the one that actually they measure the sensor. So if everything, uh, if it's just working or you just if it is a good method, uh, so if this is a, a perfect method, uh, all the collected data, all the docs here should be staying on the one to one line. But unfortunately, like you know, you see, like you know, uh, our national method is not doing so well. Uh, there's a reason we uh, papers just got published by like a Bath Trust. So he's a professor from uh, Canada. He's a Canadian. So he works at the University of the Queen Queen's University, uh, Ottawa, I believe. Uh, you know, it's somewhere east coast uh, at, of Canada. And like you know, he come up with uh, a method called stiff uh, stiffness method. So this will be the equations that he is, he, he used to calculate T max. And like uh, his uh, approach is uh, proven to be much better than the Ashto Simplify method. So uh, I assume enough. You know, I think like uh, maybe Canada will be the since he's from uh, he's a Canadian. So maybe it will be the first uh, you know, country to ad adopt this different method. And soon enough, I I believe uh, the United States will follow it. And then uh, using this different method, stiffness method uh, to calculate T max. Um, and I upload the paper from 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 uh, this offer on Canfax. Uh, you, you just come out like uh, maybe a couple of weeks or one month ago. So feel free to uh, to to read it if you're interested in. Also, you want to further uh, know know more about this business. Um, so that pretty much is uh, you know we see like uh, where the okay poor failure. Um, so this is uh, one of the three types of uh, failures, internal failures uh, that we need to investigate. Uh, remember, right? We have three kinds. First is the um, is like the internal rupture, and uh, that need to deal with the yield stress of the reinforced uh, elements. 
Um, the second one is the connections of failure is, 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 is highly, um, it depends on uh, what type of connections, uh, uh, you're using. So that one you need to investigate like a case by case. And here the third one, the pool failure, you, we will have a more universal framework, uh, established to handle different type of war phase and also, uh, a type of uh, reinforcements. So here, this equations, so the basic framework. So pretty much it has two parts. Uh, so this is the uh, resistance. And this is the loading. And the loading uh, estimations, we talked about it already uh, in the previous uh, two slides. So now we need to ensure that uh, this loading is smaller than a factor that um, uh, with res resistance uh, estimations and the factor is the factor of safety uh, which is restricted by one and a half and the key components uh, provided by the uh, provided uh, to the resistance is the uh, overburden stress so this term here is pretty much is your vertical uh, uh, effective stress so it is the um, the this your unit weight times the depth And it, it can, it can be, it can be including distributed surcharge. It must be that, uh, the debt load only. So you could be like, uh, the unit wage times the Z plus the surcharge. But this need to be the debt load only. So it's only debt load. Um, live flow like you know traffic loading you know don't count on it because you not be there all the time uh, very likely you know if you have a transportation project uh you know the, the life flow of uh, uh vehicles that travel through your your uh, on top of an embankment they do harm more than good so you know you cannot count on it but if you have like a, a highway uh you know uh, uh infrastructure sitting there forever that you can count on then yes then you will be part of your uh, resistance force and then like you know you will be a punch of different like correction factors so first of all this uh this l sub e is the length of uh, uh, um uh embankment of the reinforcements in resisting song so we talk about this already this l sub e right this is the same as the previous slide so this is the l sub e so you, we just look at the resistance zone this is the l sub e and also a bunch of correction factors um the F point, uh, sorry, the F, the F star is the poor resistant factors. So you have, uh, um, there's a lot of like, uh, 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 so this, uh, poor resistant factors, uh, you know, go back to the 2000 design menu to six points, uh, eight point two, um, uh, and you have depends on a lot of different like, uh, uh, scenarios, uh, for that one. So if we go back to our 2005 uh, menus, go to um, the relevant chapters. So you'll be here. So when we talk about all those um, uh, reactions or interactions between soils and reinforcements, and this F star is the poor resistance. Uh, it will be depends on um, a lot of defense materials. You know, if it's a steel, uh, then, you know, you have some uh, simple equations there to estimate that. Or if you, it is, um, other materials, uh, like geo grid, uh, steel grid, you can still use those, uh, but those equations there. And, uh, but for like, uh, geotextile or like, uh, geosynthetic materials, then, uh, you will have other, uh, estimations, uh, here. So, uh, when you come to a, uh, estimate F sub star, uh, you may want to go back to your design menu. And alpha is the scale correction factors. Um, and the L sub C is the coverage uh, ratio. So, you know, this picture here shows you a very good uh, illustration. So how to calculate L sub C. For example, if you have a, uh, a steel a strip right there, you know the, uh, the length of a strip. And it's from center to center. Uh, the L sub C is the, uh, pretty much is the, the coverage, uh, 
uh, area by the steel divided by the uh, carburetor area by soil. So that is the um, uh, R sub C. So if you have a geotextile and uh, you know it's as continuous like a layer, then this uh, R sub C ratios will be equal to one. Um, and the capital C is another correction factors is equal to two for strip, uh, grid, and uh, sheet type of uh, reinforcements. So with all this like correction factors and like you know knowing the factor of safety, you want to be at least to be one point five. Uh, if you reorganize the equations, uh, we can back calculate what, what is the uh, minimum uh, R sub E you need uh, to define, uh, you know, uh, for your uh, uh, MSE wall. And you can use this to compare with uh, uh, the simplified, uh, you know, design chart right there, uh, which like, you know, uh, in some case, if you find an R sub E, uh, can be smaller than that. Uh, what you recommend, or it helps you to back calculate. You know, calculate this L sub E help you to help you to calculate what is the length that you need. Because this like a L sub A, you can use those like a design chart to help you to find and how long is L sub E. Then you can use these equations. So you know L sub A from design chart, L sub E from these equations. Then it helps you to estimate. What is the total length of reinforcement you need uh, at the, you know, and then compare with the very, very uh, original like preliminary uh, design that you have. Remember, like uh, we talk about those design chart, uh, <clears throat> we always f uh, start from preliminary sizing, and um, for that case, uh, well, those preliminary sizings uh, you may want to revise or you may want to uh, consult with. Uh, you know those simple calculations. See whether you you know you are over designing because at the end of the day, uh, you know you, you you don't want your project to be like a, a super conservative that like you know end up like uh, uh, is becomes super expensive. So um, this L sub A, uh, pretty much like you know uh, you can use these equations to estimate based on here. So this is the uh, ex extensible uh, uh, chart for geo grid and geotextile. So for metallic reinforcements, you know, those are the equations that we use. So this is uh, uh, in, uh, inextensible. So this is the metal uh, reinforcements. And this is the extensible. For geo grid and geo textile, when it comes to the L sub A, so the pool out failure or the pool capacity uh, uh, is something we always need to check uh, for internal stability, and also it related to uh, how long, uh, you know, it's strictly related related to how long uh, what uh, your reinforcements uh, need to be. Okay, so let's talk about the design, um, for example, problems uh, for internal stability. So first of all, like uh, we set the um, the um, the distance between like a uh, like a very pretty much arbitrary um, area or arbitrary length for each uh, reinforcement. So we set at like a 0.75 meter. So that would be the distance between like a each like a reinforced layer, as we can see here. So as we can see here, whoops. So this is the example problems, example problems. So uh, this would be our uh, reinforcements, and uh, we set like. Uh, the atrobury uh, distance here for each reinforcements to be S of V, so 0.75 meters. And we know, uh, and our our field, uh, the unit weight for the field is like 18.8 uh, kilo newtons per meter crep, crep. Uh, so that will be kind of like uh, the unit weight of our backfield soils. Uh, we know the surcharge is 10 kilopascal. 
uh, the height of the uh, the uh, uh, retaining wall is 6.6 meter, which is required. Um, and this is our uh, preliminary uh, length that we designed for MSC wall. So this can be changed. And it is, uh, we just set at like a 7% of the height of the wall. And like, you know, first, like a, we, uh, we, and we can optimize uh, this length by like, you know, uh, finding the minimum uh, uh, length that fulfill all the requirements, both uh, externals and internal stability, then like that would be our most economical design. Um, next is the S of H, which is another dimensions of the uh, uh, atropary uh, uh, area, so which can be told from this picture. So uh, from and uh, since we are setting as uh, um, a steel strip, so the distance between like uh, the uh, metallic strip, uh, horizontal distance, uh, we call it like S of H. So that's another one for design. And this is preliminary for now. I just put it there. Um, and uh, we can change that. Like, you know, especially when we get to the factor of safety, see how uh, it affect our design. And this is the width. Uh, the B is the the, the, uh, the width of the of the metallic strip. And the E sub C is the thickness. So again, those like, you know, part of the materials that uh, uh, you can choose uh, for what kind of reinforcements you want to you want to use, and this is steel. So the yell strength of the steels, uh, and we uh, select thirty five percent of it for our rupture uh, uh, breakage uh, uh, factor safety analysis. So first of all, like you know, uh, uh, we know like you know um, the uh, arbitrary uh, area vertically, so we can break down uh, our wall into different layers. So first, uh, you know, this, our very first reinforcements starting from top will be uh, at a depth of 0.75, uh, 0.675 a meter da down. This is our first layer of reinforcements. And the next will be uh, our, our next uh, layers and so forth and so forth. So we know like, you know, how many layers we need until like, you know, uh, we get to the bottom, get close to six meter, which is the height of our wall. And at each uh, reinforcements, we can calculate the vertical stress. So now this vertical stress is also include the, uh, the surcharge. So you need to be very careful. We need to be very clear uh, when you want to include a surcharge and when you do not. Uh, next, you can find out the K values. So the K values um, will be um, uh, like the Ka, but now this is, I mean, the uh, lateral earth uh, pressure coefficients, but this is the uh, reinforcements. So this is the soil, um, soils uh, uh, reinforcement interactions, uh, earth pressure. So uh, remember we talked about this like uh, previously, uh, uh, talk about when we on slide number 18. So this is uh, the chart that we can use uh, for design. And this chart pretty much is same as uh, this one. This one's a little bit more simple. Uh, we just look at the metallic uh, components. So up to six meters and we are at the metal strip. So pretty much like, you know, uh, we can use this one. This, this curve here. And um, I realized this is uh, K over Ka. So at different depth, uh, you find the ratios. And uh, we know Ka. So we can calculate Ka. Ka will be, um, we calculated uh, at the beginning already. Um, so we have already found Ka already. At the very beginning, it's 0.33. So we know Ka. And now uh, we know the depth, we know this curve, so we can find out the K value uh, for uh, at each elevations uh, based on this chart. So we know the K and then we can find the F pine, which is the uh, 
they pull out resistant factors. And according to our Federal Highway Design Menu, um, we, we are using a steel reinforcement. So we use this equation here. 1.2 plus like a log C sub U and C sub U is the uh, coefficients of uniformities and uh, we are choosing C sub U equal 4 at this time uh, we don't know the uh, the backfill uh, at the design time so we're using C sub U equal 4 as preliminary uh, uh, designed so uh, we find our uh, F star the plural resistance factors um, and the horizontal stress is equals to the uh, K factors times the vertical stress. So we know the horizontal stress. And we can find out the L sub E. So L sub E is the effective length. So we can find out uh, L sub E based on this design chart. Because we use steel. So this is the design chart for in uh, in extensible uh, uh, reinforcements. Um, so from this from this chart, uh, we know uh, L, and then like uh, we can find out R sub 8 based on this uh, our recommendations. Then we can find out the R sub E. So R sub E uh, at the first half of it is a constant. So pretty much the strict line right here. And then you will be uh, increasing down the depth. So uh, this is how we find out R sub E uh, from with this the help of this the design chart. And then we can find out the uh, P sub R, which is the um, um, the uh, the loading uh, that for for that layer, what is the loading demand uh, horizontal loading demand? So which is the horizontal stress times the uh, the uh, the arterial area, and then times the factor of safety one point five. So that is the uh, the loading that we expect for each elevations uh, and then with that uh, we can uh, we know the loading and then we can find the uh, number of uh, metal strip that we that we need so which is the uh, uh, the number of like a uh, strip that we will need will be equals to the uh, the loading that we just calculated divided by the uh, horizontal stress that uh, we calculate. So from there, and then like got uh, uh, we wound up the uh, the number that we got. So we got the number here, and then like uh, we can calculate the uh, this is the uh, tensile stress uh, in each strip. So from this tensile stress right here, we know the horizontal stress, and also we know the number of uh, uh, strip that we need so we can calculate the tensile stress uh, that go into each reinforcements and uh, the factor of safety will be equal to the yield stress of each uh, elements or each like reinforcements divided by the loading so this is uh, you know the resistance from the materials and this is the loading and that is the factor of safety and also, so this is pretty much like uh, the first criteria. Remember, like uh, uh, for uh, internal stability, there's like uh, three items uh, we need to check. First is the breakage of each uh, uh, materials or each reinforcements. So which related to the yield stress, you know, we just calculate there. The second one is the connections. And uh, we are not doing here because connections will be highly specified uh, based on like, uh, you know, uh, uh, the contractors and also what type of uh, wall phase that you're using and the third one is the um, is the pull out uh, failure so we calculate T max here uh, which is the loading part so the T max equations uh, we talk about in this slide and then like uh, the pull out capacity we talk about this slide so the resistant part this uh, take care here. So this is the resistant part that we calculate, and uh, we have the cover coverage ratios. We assume alpha equal to equal to one, and uh, so on, so on. And then uh, we calculate the T right there, and uh, the factor of safety would be between like uh, 
uh, the resistance and the loading. Uh, and we have uh, all of them have a ratio squared at 1.5, both the breakage uh, and also the pullout, so which is good. And you know, after you do that, like uh, you realize you can, if you want to change your design, you know, you can play around with the spreadsheet that you create. And like you will see how sensitive on, you know, if you change like uh, those parameters. And uh, so this like the examples calculating the internals uh, stability. And our, I can upload the spreadsheet to Canvas for you to take a look at.